I want to talk about Beck. I think Beck is the most interesting artist of the last 30 years, and I've said that before. In fact, I did a, a video, which I'll uh, will be at the end. You can click on through. It's a, a video that I really enjoyed about Beck and Bjork. I think the most innovative artists of the last 30 plus years or so. Uh, and the reason I'm wearing this is because I saw Beck last night in Seattle with a vinyl community creator who I've known for several years virtually, and that is Paul, his channel is Baraka P. Dub. I'll put a link at the end here. He's uh, not doing as many videos as he used to, but he does uh, come back. And I, I kind of referred to him, <laughs> I said, you're, you're, you're sort of the intelligentsia of the vinyl community and of these creators, because he, he's very technical with his production. And he's done some amazing things on turntable setup and aligning, mostly based on Rega turntables. I happen to be a Rega uh, aficionado and uh, owner. Have, I've had several, several, and he brought me some swag. He lives in Houston, and he brought me from swag uh, from NASA here. So, reporting for duty, and uh, here's a overview of the show last night, uh, the Beck Show, and uh, all the records I have in my collection. Not a ranking, but just an overview. And what's interesting is he told, uh, Paul told uh, someone, he's here for a, uh, a convention meeting, a series of meetings this week, and he told someone he works with uh, that he was going to see a show, and they said, who? And they said, Beck, and the guy's never heard of Beck. And I thought it's interesting, and I know some people my ages who never heard of Beck. Beck's been around for over 30 years. Uh, he put his first record out, I believe his first full album, around uh, 1990 one or two, and you never heard of Beck? Come on, amazing artist. So uh, we're gonna jump in here. I'm gonna take this off because I just feel I just got out of the uh, International Space Station here and I'm on uh, dry land, so give me a moment here. That's better from Houston's NASA to San Francisco's Tenderloin, the loin. This was a gift given to me just as I left San Francisco 10 years ago. Oh, not quite 10 years, nine and a half years ago. So Beck, what's interesting about Beck, I think he's the most innovative artist, as I said, over the last you know 30 years. Uh, from East LA, he actually, I didn't realize, and I totally forgot, he lived in the Seattle area for a while, uh, writing some music in the Olympia during that kind of uh, scene with Slater Kinney and the, uh, the musicians that came out of there. A lot of bands you know, just uh, prior into the grunge scene, we're playing down in uh, here, playing in Seattle here, as well as Olympia, Washington, which is 45 minutes uh, south of here, give or take, a little up to an hour maybe. Beck is fantastic. To me, he is the, um, he's this, this cool, white, funky soul performer, and he's got more soul than a lot of uh, other artists do. I mean, he goes into different genres, which I'll get into when I go through the record. But there were four acts. It opened up with uh, a band called Sir Chloe, had never heard of. Really great. They only played a short, very short 20-minute set. The singer reminded me a little of, of the Australian uh, Courtney Barnett, who I adore. I thought they were really good. Second was Jenny Lewis, and I love her new album. Uh, she's now in Nashville. Uh, she was in Rilo Kiley, that band, and has a new album. Uh, now in Nashville from L.A., very 70s-like, a little sort of white soul country uh, pop music, but what a beautiful voice and very good, uh, you know, just a very good entertainer. Love that. Then there was a band, and I hate to admit this, and I'm going to be called out for this, a band called Phoenix, French band. Apparently they have seven albums. I'd never heard of them. I don't know their music. The audience went crazy over them. I believe that at least half the audience was there for Phoenix. Uh, they were almost like a co-headliner with Beck, and I didn't realize that. Paul knew who they were. I didn't know. And the lead singer, for a while, when he was young, lived around the Seattle area as well, which uh, surprised me. They were really good, really tight. I got a little tired of uh, the vocalist after a while. Great drummer, great band, very pop rock oriented reminded me initially a little bit of the shins but more of a powerhouse 
Uh, I got fatigued from that lead singer. I wish there was a little more variety in the vocals, maybe harmonies or another singer occasionally. I got tired of him, and the guy was such a showman. Uh, walked through the crowd almost like Bruce Springsteen, got, got up in the crowd in the front, walked around the audience with a spotlight, almost like on a leash, a really <clears throat> long tether, I should say. And it it was amazing, but I found them a little more like a... a, a a somewhat of a slick, more modern-ish, if this makes any sense, boy band. And I know I'm going to get uh, chastised on that. They were they were good. I I like I got fatigued by them a little bit. I thought, okay, I've I've heard it after about five songs. I got it. Tight as hell. Really good band, but just not my thing. Maybe. But um, Beck played a wonderful uh, variety of of songs from his album, his Freak Folk stuff, uh, from Sea Change. They played, uh, like, God, maybe three songs from uh, that his funkiest album, Midnight Vultures. I'll talk about that here. And uh, obviously his entire career, Odile, Loser. Uh, so he went from the dance, funky, hip-hop stuff uh, to folk-based singer-songwriter semi-acoustic just really good I think he's the coolest act still he's 53 years old so he's not a, a, a youngster anymore uh, his very first album I do not have on CD I'm afraid to say but um, I'll start out with a stereopathic soul manure an indie record he really he went to New York for a while got into the sort of the Lower East Side New York freak folk scene and he came back to LA uh, and started his music was very much like that, very rootsy, very folky. If you find his early CDs or records, uh, some on vinyl are hard to get, uh, but it's a really great freak folk sound. Think Skip Spence's solo album, uh, bluesy, country flavored. This is an indie a release from, I think it was like 92-ish. ish. Of course, he signs to a big label, uh, Geffen Records. And he puts out this mellow gold. And this was the huge breakthrough. And of course, the song Loser, hip hop type thing, very uh, crowd friendly. He, he, he performed that last night and it was fantastic. Uh, just love this record. This is a great mix too. There is some of that freak folk, but it gets more into the dance hip hop thing. Uh, but what, a, I mean, he can do it. He's one young here, white boy that just nails it. And, uh, you know, grew up within that scene in East L.A. and uh, fantastic performer, fantastic record. Then he had recorded prior to that a record that came again on um, on an indie label, and that is uh, this album, One Foot in the Grave. Again, another indie release, came out after Mellow Gold, but was recorded prior to This is the one, I th actually, more I'm thinking of it, that's freak folk with field recordings and uh, little bits of dialogue. And I mean, it's it's just really an independent, wonderful home studio type uh, recording. Love this stuff. And then, of course, the big breakout album for Beck is Odile. This is on Geffen Records again. This was huge. Now, the first CD I got, this was a CD era for me, obviously, but the first CD I got was Mellow Gold. I love that record. And of course, then it was Odile. And uh, this is a great, I believe the Dust Brothers uh, worked, yeah, on this with him, with the uh, the mixes and the recording, the production. And he is a brilliant studio uh, protagonist. And uh, we're obviously working with the Dust Brothers, sort of pull something else out uh, for Beck. And a fantastic record. They also worked on, was it Paul's Boutique with Beastie Brothers too. Uh, this is probably one of the most important records too and uh, of the 1990s and you hate to just say importance that if you like the music that's what it's about obviously but this is a fantastic record a lot of sampling a lot of uh, funkiness and hip-hop rain uh, and rock and roll rain uh, there's a song on here that i recognize right away the little introduction sampling of, of van morrison and them Van Morrison's cover of uh, Dylan's It's All Over Baby Blue, that little instrumental uh, 
sound. I knew that version. And a lot of people I know don't know that version on that Them album, uh, one of the two uh, Them albums that Van Morrison sings on. Seek that out and then listen to this album and you'll hear it. But important album, but amazing album. And I it holds up because it's got a funkiness to it. Yes, it's that 90s hip hop uh, mixologist type of thing. Uh, but uh, wonderful, wonderful, important record. Uh, this is a later expanded edition that uh, Geffen put out, UMG actually, UME, uh, Universal Music Group, that has a second disc of remixes, B-sides. And he's one of those artists that his B-sides could be included uh, beautifully on any record. And uh, he's just so prolific and so clever and just a huge lover of music of all genres, you know, country. I mean, you don't think of really country and hip hop, uh, but uh, this is a great, uh, if you're a CD person, I highly recommend this one if you don't have uh, this one here. What's great about Beck is he doesn't rely on doing the same thing twice, at least in a row. He'll come back and swing back uh, to a genre. But after Odile, he eventually, after some singles and things, he puts out uh, this album, uh, Mutations. And I would say this might be a good entry point if you don't know Beck and if you're more of the you know, 60s, 70s child. Uh, this is a hark back to British music, to folk and country. It's got some sort of the great songwriting styling of Ray Davis from the Kinks and David Bowie, early David Bowie, um, maybe Ziggy Stardust or Hunky, Hunky Dory, that kind of feel to it. This is a beautiful record, beautiful songwriting, a lot of great acoustic guitars on this, very accessible and a gorgeous recording. Uh, this is a 2016 reissue. Most of his records are being reissued, uh, which is really great. Now, then again, after that, he goes 360 and this is an album that my son and I would play in the car. My son, Joseph, adores this record. And aside from a very limited release on vinyl when it came out, this is the one that we all are waiting for on vinyl, and that is uh, Midnight Vultures by Beck. This is his funkiest, soulful, cool-ass record. And I've said this before, but for those of you, I need to repeat this. This is the best Prince record Prince never made. It sounds so much like a Prince record, influential like a Prince record, but not ripping off Prince. But it is funky as hell. Sex Laws. Uh, there's a great, great uh, song called uh, Deborah, which is just a slow, melting, elongated, uh, soulful, uh, soulful song. Very 70s-like. Um, just love this uh, record. Uh, he played, I think, three songs uh, last night from this album. And th this record makes me smile. My son knows this record by heart. He loves this record. It's it's in your face, but soulful. It it If he didn't do it so well, it could be considered as a parody record. But it's not that at all. It's just a really, really well-produced funky ass record it's kind of that <laughs> type thing and it is so good it it's you know it, it, it you can you can think it's like really one of my favorite funky soul records by this uh kind of little uh, white guy from east la but he pulls it off and he pulls it off really well there's a sense of humor about it as well throughout it then there is uh this little number this is called Beck Stray Blues, but this is uh, this is sort of some Japanese single B sides and other B sides. This is a comp. This is again alternate stuff, uh, things that never made it onto an album, and it's a, a various comp uh, that's just really cool. I I don't know if this ever came out on vinyl, but again, as I said, his B sides in many ways are stronger than a lot of a lot of other bands. Uh, a sides. So uh, Beck is so cool. Now, this is something that is another special. And see what I'm getting at here? He has a lot of amazing, perfect, just gloriously produced and original records. Yet he does uh, show on his sleeve his influences. And this is another one.
This is the black vinyl version. It's a very rare pink vinyl version. This is not available, but you can get it, I think, as a normal uh, release on, um, again, on DG Geffen, David Geffen Company uh, Records. This goes in a completely different, this is sort of start his moodier uh, career, which he had done twice on records. And again, not back to back. Uh, this is very influenced by Serge Gainsbourg and Melody Nelson album. In fact, there's a, a direct take sampling in a way, orchestration. I believe his uh, father, Beck's father, also a musician, did some of the orchestration work arrangements on some of this. This is a gorgeous, ethereal, uh, the vocals are beautiful, some uh, overlapping harmonies with himself, but the arrangements, even the guitar work. You know, I, I, I failed to say on what was really interesting on going back, I have to just reminded me, going back to this album, there's a soulful, funky record, I'm blanking out which one, um, where there's banjo playing in it <laughs> on a soul record. I've never heard great, great banjo playing. I think it's Beck, too, playing. He's a multi-instrument genius, I would say. But this has a lot of that, too. Great lead guitar stuff. He's a great lead guitar player. And uh, multi-instrument, you know, just a Renaissance musician, in the best and classic sense. So uh, this is, again, Sea Change, a, a perfect record and a moody record. And that's a record accessible to people maybe who aren't into the funky, funky thing. Then there's Guero. This uh, is has a lot of Latin influences, that East LA sound where Beck grew up. Pop record, dance record with some, you know, some Spanish uh, language songs merging into English back and forth. And then the supplement album he did, which has a different uh, version. There's pedal steel. He uses pedal steel a lot on this. This is Guerlito. It's kind of almost a, a, a companion piece that came out uh, after this record. Uh, another beautiful record, upbeat, uh, soulful in a different way too. And it's an unusual record. Obviously, there's some country influence as well, but it's really an upbeat dance record. Beck, Guero, Guero and Guerlito, Modern Guilt. Uh, this harks back to rock and roll. This harks back to a little bit of a new wave sound. Uh, there's just indie, again, indie guitar playing uh, music. Uh, this was co-produced with Danger Mouse, so it's it's got that, there's a certain funkiness and... Um, sampling on this as well uh this is it, it this is more of a it, it's stripped down compared to some of the other stuff but it's still a beautiful beautiful record so the modern guilt back love this record co-produced by danger mouse there in the late 2000s beck puts out the information this is an upbeat electronic dancey record electronica in a way uh, not the moody kind of electronics, it's in your face, it's funky, it's soulful, but it's electric. And great arrangements, a lot of stuff on here, just a lot of sounds, a lot of of electronic, you know, back and forth swirling through your head. Great, great songwriting, elevator music, nausea, dark star, not that dark star, the information, just, just a fabulous, fabulous record. It came with... Uh, this whole graph paper motif with stickers so you can put together uh, your own graph. Don't have a vinyl copy of this. I long to have one. I need to get one. But um, a, a wonderful, wonderful record, too. Uh, can, again, switching, coming out of nowhere. And then between albums. I mean, the guy's so prolific in working with other artists. He puts out a couple of singles, somewhat back-to-back, -back, that were downloads. And they did a limited edition through his website uh, of on vinyl. And this is 12 inch singles, two versions of it won't be long. Uh, Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth does a, a spoken uh, vocal on uh, this track. And then there is uh, Defriended. Again, main version and extended version, 12 inch. Beautiful artwork on these two records that were available directly through his website. Beck is an artist for me that I love following his journey and I follow him wherever he takes me. Sometimes I like it more initially than other times. Sometimes it takes a while to warm up to it. But this, again, as I said before, with Sea Change, with that moody, mellow, ethereal thing, he did it again with 
morning phase. Uh, this is the album that won him a Grammy for best album of the year. Not that you uh, need to judge an album by the awards. This is such a beautiful album. Some people who like his upbeat dance type in your face stuff or the folk freak folk thought this is too mellow because it's all metal like sea chain it's all moody and lush but that's the beauty of this record of course cycle morning um but i do like that there is a folk element in this as well acoustic folk and some great pop songs folk style and this acoustic things that are in between uh, the ethereal uh, pieces of music here just love this record. Again, one of my favorites, uh, Morning Phase. This is such a wonderful record. This is from 2014. So, God, we're almost going to be 10 years uh, coming up next year when this album came out. Dreams. This is a 12-inch uh, of the song Dreams, instrumental and acapella side B, 12-inch single. And, of course, this is from the album Beck Colors. This was an indie version with a slip mat. I don't use indie extra slip mats on my turntable it's cool to have stays in the thing this is more of a dance record this is one of the few records i didn't gravitate to right away i like it more now it's not one of my favorites of course it made me get several versions of it with a, a yellow vinyl version i'm not one to usually go into multicolor variants that's not my thing but for some reason with beck he sucked me in on that up all night dear love dreams and wow he performed wow last night it's a song that I, you know, I, I, I will admit I haven't dived heavily into this album. I will because Wow was such a fun, in-your-face, you know, dance number last night. I'm going to close this video out at the very end uh, with a song he did from Midnight Vultures, which is one of my favorite songs on that album. Really funky. So you'll get a chance to see in an entire song at the end of this video. But this one, this album to me is probably my least known of the Beck's album, so I, I think it's time to revisit it. Seeing an artist live um, really makes you kind of get back into maybe a, 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 a period of the artist when they bring in an older song or a song maybe you're not familiar with. You're thinking, what album is that from? So I did that, and I realized it's from Colors, and I enjoyed it live. Not my favorite, but I enjoyed it live. And finally, from 2019, Hyperspace. Now this, I will admit, when this first came out, it was in-your-face dance stuff, and I wasn't in the mood for that quite a bit. Um, but I liked it. Sounds great. Very percussive, very loud, bass-heavy, percussive-heavy. Love this packaging with this cover. It's kind of a, a bizarre, you know, Japanese-style influence, you know, car culture type of thing. But, you know, very L.A. driving uh, record. But I, I really enjoyed it. But then... I think within the year, he put out this. Now, this is the same album, some different mixes of it, from different versions of it. And this is Hyperspace 2020, the following year it came out. And this, it was in conjunction with JPL. I was asking Paul about it last night. He doesn't have this record. He needs to get it because he collects records of space, of... Uh, you know, since he works with NASA, that whole uh, thing, it, it really interests him as a hobby. But this comes with this really beautiful book of images from uh, JPL is the Jet Propulsion Lab, I believe in uh, Pasadena, with all these sort of images. And there was a collaboration of this record with JPL. I don't quite understand all the details, but it's got these great spatial... Paul, if you're there, you comment on this. Uh, where are these images from? Of course, all I have to do is read the liner notes, but of course, Mazzy hasn't done that. But I got into this when I got this second version of this record, and I fell in love with the record. It's in your face. It's a record you want to crank. It's a record you really want to just play really loud. It's got this great sort of metallic cover, obviously a different version of the similar thing. It's kind of this yin-yang thing with this Japanese writing here, uh, but Hyperspace, Hyperspace 2020. So Hyperspace 2019, Hyperspace 2020. That's Beck in a nutshell, and I want new music from him all the time. Thanks for watching. Love this guy. And again, 
to me, the most one of the most important solo artists of our time is uh, Beck Hansen. That's his uh, name, Beck. So, Mazzy loves you. Thanks for watching. By the way, the tour uh, show I saw last night was the very first leg, the opening night of uh, this summer Odyssey tour with uh, Phoenix and Jenny Lewis and Sir Chloe. Check it out. Great fun night. Long, five hours, but four bands, five hours, not so long, but it was still a wonderful evening. Loved it. Mazzy loves you. <laughs> Crazy.